Hi guys, and welcome back to the Road to Success MCAT Test Prep Series. This is my final video in my psychology series where I talk to you all about everything you need to know about psychology for the MCAT. These last few videos have leaned more towards sociology, but they have still been very important. And this one will be important as well, even though it's a very short video. I'll be talking about culture today. Culture will consist of uh, discussions about social inequality, social mobility, poverty, and finally segregation. These are all very topical uh, topics we can talk about today. And you can probably think of examples in your head about how, what you can uh, discuss in each of these different subjects. That being said, let's jump right into it. Let's start talking about our social inequality. Let's start by talking about the different types of cultures. Subcultures are smaller communities that are distinguishable from the main culture. These groups are usually support their members for a lifetime. Microcultures, on the other hand, only support their members going through a certain phase in life. Think of Girl Scouts or sororities. Lastly, countercultures are communities that differ largely from the main culture and tend to clash with it. So think the punk rock movement or hippies. Culture lag is when the culture takes time to catch up to the technology. An example of this in the medical field is that several hospitals and universities still use databases that run on operating systems that are decades old. It would be too expensive and difficult to update to the modern OS, so doctors and healthcare professionals lag behind other workers and put information in the same way they, that their predecessors did in the 1990s. This is the same in other important industries like government or space travel. Material culture is the physical and technological aspects of our lives, like the phones we use and the cars we drive. Non-material culture is ideas and beliefs we have and share. Material culture changes almost annually, while non-material culture takes a longer time to adjust. Culture shock is when we have feelings of fear that arise when we uh, encounter new cultures. This usually causes feelings of homesickness as well. Social inequality occurs due to an uneven distribution of resources. Unfortunately, this affects racial minorities the most. Gender is also affected, although to a lesser extent. This causes feelings of social exclusion, segregated neighborhoods, and political tension. Active government involvement, as well as improving healthcare access and education to minorities, can fix these problems. Mobility refers to changing social classes in society. Vertical mobility is moving up or down the hierarchy. This can be done by getting a promotion at work, therefore making more money and entering a different weight class. Likewise, you can also lose your job and fall from grace. Horizontal mobility is moving within the same class. This is usually in regards to switching roles in a company with no real pay raise. Your position has changed, but there is no real tangible benefit. The caste system has very little social mobility and uses one's background as a sole determinant of status. The class system, the class system is different and uses background and personal ability to determine status. Meritocracy is when your person, personal ability is the sole determinant behind your success. The U.S. totes itself, totes itself as a meritocracy because of the freedom that we all experience here. Lastly, intergenerational mobility is the changing of status within one's lifetime, while intergenerational mobility is the changing of status from one generation to another. For example, a father who immigrated from the U.S. to the third, to a, or sorry, to the U.S. from a third world country, uh, puts his son through school, and that son ends up becoming a doctor. That would be considered intergenerational mobility. Poverty is split up into two tiers. Absolute poverty is seen in developing countries and is described as a lack of even the minimum level of resources to survive. It's usually $2 a day. Relative poverty is what we see in developed countries and is defined by a percent level below the medium income. The issue isn't surviving, but maintaining a reasonable lifestyle. 
Social reproduction states that social inequality is inherited. Financial capital can be translated to social and cultural capital. So if you don't have the resources to network yourself, you don't have the ability to grow, and therefore your children will be born to similar situations as yourself. Segregation is a form of discrimination, separate but equal. There are two main types of segregation. Environmental segregation is when areas with high poverty have few environmental benefits. Waste facilities, factories, and other polluting industries are located here. Unfortunately, racial minorities are affected the most. Residential segregation is a splitting of neighborhoods by race. This, is, this can cause political isolation, linguistic isolation, and spatial mismatch. That covers everything I have for you guys today. This is the final video in the Road to 528 uh, MCAT test prep series for psychology. Uh, there wasn't that much, so I'm glad we ended on a light video. We did cover a lot of stuff like segregation and poverty, as well as vertical or uh, class mobility, social inequality, culture. So I hope you guys understood everything like that. If not, please feel free to message me, and I'll try and help you guys out. That being said, this concludes the Road to 528 MCAT test prep series for psychology. Uh, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Happy studying, and good luck with your exam.